Hello my fellow Retromaniacs and welcome to Let's Read the official guide from Ninja to Power The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Official player's guide So yeah, I have a quite a big collection of these old guides that I have found from the net and um, yeah, they look good, they look cool, but um, uh, the thing is that if I haven't played a game, I don't want to read this because this will just spoil the whole game for you completely. Uh, obviously, if you get stuck, they might help, but uh, on the other hand, you can use like Game Facts or YouTube. So, this was a these guides were like a really for like a, a, a time period before YouTube or GameFAX, you know, when you didn't have internet connection on your on your phone, you could you have to like find your find your way in the game, maybe by sending a letter to Ninja Power and waiting the waiting the next issue. Or a couple of months, if if they answered it, that was the that was the dark ages of uh, of uh, getting stuck getting stuck in a video game. So another way to way to uh, progress in the game was to buy a official or unofficial game game guide. But if you if you, if you lived in Finland, there probably wasn't many guides released, so you were stuck like I was usually in video games because I, uh, there were nev there never were any guides really published in Finland, except I think uh, Pokemon Blue and Red had like a game master's guide, which I think I. Bought. But yeah. But if you have, if you have finished the game, then these are quite interesting. Maybe maybe you actually find like secrets you didn't even know that exist. Like uh, in Ocarina of Time, I never collected all the Skulltulas, golden Skulltulas. So I think. Um, I will learn new things by reading the guide. Obviously, if you nowadays you can just uh, write on on a YouTube all golden sculptors locations. There's probably a hundred uh, YouTube videos showing the locations. But you know, I'm a retro gamer. I for me YouTube and their tutorials don't exist. So I'm going the old way, reading magazines. Okay, we got a message from the master, Shigeru Miyamoto. For some reason I don't think this is like real, someone just uh, impersonating him. Hi, I'm Shigeru Miyamoto. Thank you for playing so many of our fun and challenging games. We try to write this guide to give you the strategy you need to complete your adventure. Why am I speaking like I don't... I, I'm a Japanese person speaking poor English. But we also wanted you to discover much of the game on your own. A great deal of thought and care went into creating this game so that players could find more than just challenges, but also a lot of, of fun. This is the best how to guide for those of you who are looking for some strategies to complete your adventure. With this book, you will discover the secrets of every nook and granny of the land of Hyrule as if you were one of the Hyrules. Uh, of the Hylians. Okay, like uh, Link. Uh, 
Also, we hope the level of fun and challenge you experience in the game exceeds your ex expectations. If you get tired in the middle of your journeys, you can play the ocarina whenever you want. Try out its very cool options, such as half tone or whole tone shift vibrations. Please see the fold-out poster for more details on making your own melodies. Good luck. Yeah, I don't remember playing with Tokarina. I, I I did notice that it, was it like if you hold the hold the uh, control stick, you can do those. Whole, whole tones, but yeah. So um, but yeah. Since this uh, this like official guide, they got like this great, great uh, art, st art and maps, and so on. Although usually the unofficial, unofficial guides as well, add them. Herein lies the full account of the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time in this volume. You will find a comprehensive re retelling of the tale and an in-depth guide through Link's entire adventure. It contains detailed maps of every place he visited, descriptions of how, be how he found every item and weapon in his amazing inventory. Interesting, like it's it's in like a past tense. The treasure trove of useful lore from ancient Hyrule. This guide is the only one from Ninja the Power, and it is an essential part of any Hylian heroes or so arsenal. So yeah, obviously, if you haven't played the game just by reading the uh, reading the contents, will spoil everything here. Ooh, Haunted Wasteland. Ooh, Ice Cavern. Ooh, Ganondorf's Tower. Okay. But I guess this was released like at the same time as the game. All, all this was. Cannot read that small text, I have to. Make this a little bit bigger. The Legend of Zelda. Much of Hylian lore has faded with the passing of years, but one story that still shines bright is the Legend of Zelda. This is no simple tale, but an incredible tapestry woven of many years and many wondrous adventures. One odd thing about the legend is that it doesn't seem to have been written in chronological order, and scholars still disagree about which events came first. What scholars? <laughs> Players, in other words. We will therefore recount the legend as it was sent down in ancient scrolls, and let you decide for yourself. Here now the saga of Link and Zelda, the greatest heroes Hyrule has ever known. Yeah, I think nowadays this is like a, this is like a multiverse or something. Like Link is reborn every time, every couple of centuries, and Ganondorf and Zelda as well. And it, it really doesn't make any sense how the things happen. Like Majora's Mask, it happens in like like in Alice in Wonderland scenario. The Legend of Zelda. She was a princess of the realm. As intelligent as she was beautiful, but all of Zelda's royal power could not hold back the darkling power that arose to threaten her kingdom. Her kingdom? I think um, it was just a princess and it was her father that ruled. The name of the that power was Ganon, an accursed wizard 
who stole a piece of the mystic Triforce, a token of good fortune from three goddesses. Ganon captured Zelda and searched frantically for the remaining pieces of the Triforce, which the princess had scattered to the far corners of Hyrule. Before she was imprisoned, Zelda sent forth her faithful servant Impa to seek out a, a hero strong enough and trustworthy enough to reunite the Triforce and break Ganon's power. That hero was Link, a selfish young warrior who, by fortune of or fate, saved Impa from Ganon's monstrous Moblin servants. Hearing of Zelda's plight, Link braved countless dangers to recover the fragments of the Triforce, eventually battling his way to Death Mountain to confront Ganon himself. Finding that no earthly weapon could harm Ganon, Link used the legendary Silver Arrow to piece, pierce the wizard's black heart and destroy him utterly, or so it was thought. The wise one say that uh, while evil can be diminished, it can never truly be vanquished. As, uh, and soon an ominous shadow fell over the land of Hyrule once more. And that was Zelda. 1987. This was the first game to feature Zelda and Link, and video gamers had never before seen its like. It combined action with an intricate plot and became the blueprint for all the adventure style games that followed. It was also the first battery packed game for, for the NES, allowing a fletching warriors to save their Hylian adventure from another day, or at least until after dinner. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine The Legend of Zelda without save function? You would have to beat the whole game in one sitting. Your mother would, your mother would never allow that. You know, I remember playing some games on NES and Super NES that you could save, and usually I wouldn't get like past the second stage because I, I wasn't allowed to play like four hours straight on. Two hours was like max. Released in 1988, Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link presented our hero in a new perspective. While the overworld scenes were shown in the familiar overhead view, battle scenes and pal palace exploration were shown in a side-scrolling format. This game also included RPG-style features like experience points and experience levels, and it focused more on combat than mazes and puzzles. Yeah, I would like, I would hope that Nintendo would would have made like uh, Adventure of Link style of sequel, like on. Game Boy or Game Boy Advance. That could have been nice, you know. Have like a side scroller Zelda. But even even the later games like uh, Minish Cap and uh, and uh, have have used the Link to the Past and style of uh, over overhead view. But I I always have a like have had a like a good memories of the adventure of Link, you know, side scroller. It 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 it, it cannot be that bad, you know. I think um, like um, you know Mario is a side scroller. Well, why wouldn't uh, another? Zelda game work as a side scroll. After Ganon's defeat, a new golden age blossomed in Hyrule. There was no want, and there were happiness and prosperity in great measure. One person who did not share in this time of joy, ironically, was Link. The young hero was troubled by signs of lurking danger, and his fur worst fears were realized when Princess Zelda was stricken by a terrifying enhancement enchantment. A mysterious sorcerer, unable to wrest the secrets of the Triforce from Zelda, cast upon her a spell of endless, dreamless sleep. A hostess sorcerer is never shown. 
you know, that's just Dark Link and, and the Triforce Keeper. Link strode forth once more, venturing through forest and town and across the roiling sea to root up out this vile fend and uh, bring him to justice. Link learned the, that the sorcerer had fled to the ancient ruin of the great palace. The only way to break the seal on the palace gate was to gather the shards of a magic crystal buried, buried for centuries within six dungeons and guarded by fearsome creatures. Undeterred by such dangers, dangers, Link fought doggedly through each palace, turning aside moblins, dealers, and the manner of demonic, all manner of demonic uh, enemies at every step. Already a master of sword and shield, Link also began to learn the ways of magic to turn the weapons of his enemy against him. After many days of toil and trial. Link finally stood before the gate of the great palace and ripped the final barrier asunder. What are these words? I, what, what means? What does asunder mean? Never heard, never even seen that kind of word. He struck down the sorcerer's guardian, the cruel thunderbird. Then I turned to face his ultimate foe. No challenge, no quest could have prepared Link for the horror he beheld. For the enemy he faced was none other than himself. Given form by an unknown power, a shadow duplicate of Link was the true architect of evil who had plagued Hyrule. With a shrill cry, Link leaped to the attack. How long the battle raged, the chronicles do not tell, but the sound of their clashing swords was like thunder, shaking the very pillars of heaven. Man, this uh, Writers, whoever wrote this, he or she gone, gone very great lengths to picture this like epic, epic story, like almost like book. I don't know if this has ever ever been like a chilled up related, to, you know, no novels. I don't think so. Not even like an official. Okay. And when their battle cry cries finally fell silent, it was Link who emerged the victor. Thus was Princess Zelda freed from her unnatural slumber, and the dark pa pal pa pal of doom over Hyrule lifted. Little is known of Link's later, later adventures, but the ancient texts do say that he was ever vigilant of evil shadows upon the land. It is also said that though the people of Hyrule revered him in story and song, Link remained humble to the last, for he knew that the most potent evil often comes not from without, but from within. The scrolls of Hyrule, much of the lore of Hyrule was recorded by scholars and sages. While many of the scrolls have been lost or destroyed over time, some were preserved in the Hyrule Castle archives. Oh, oh really? They're making up this stuff. Many people believe that there are more chapter of the Legend of Zelda yet to be discovered. Yeah, like uh, Wind Waker and... and uh, And um, Skyward, Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess. Yeah, at least this was like a, still easy to make this like chrono chronological, somewhat, because you only had like four games in 1998. Link to the Past. The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past marked a return to the all overhead view and a renewed emphasis on a plot and puzzle solving. The game was one of the largest of its day, both in scope and its si in the size of its program. It featured a huge inventory of weapons, tools and items, all of which had some practical purpose in the game. 
Even the chickens turned out to be useful. Link, uh, Link's Awakening, the only Game Boy title in the series so far. Then, then obviously, a year later, or, or was it like two years later, there was uh, um, those two games. What were they called again? Ah, then the title escapes my mind at the moment. Uh, but you know, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the Game Boy Color games. Link's Awakening may not have had anything to do with Ganon or the Triforce. It followed Link as he explored a remote land called Colind Island. And there were suggestion in the game that the entire adventure may have been nothing more than a dream. It remains one of the most popular Game Boy games and is scheduled for re-release in a colorized version for Game Boy Color, complete with a new dungeon level. Wait a second. A new dungeon level? Because when I played it, I don't know if I played the, like the original, or yeah, I think I played the DX version. So yeah, Oracle of Ages was the Game Boy Color, and Oracle of uh, Seasons. Yeah, two games that like combined together. I don't know how I have played them both, so I cannot stream them at the, or I don't want to stream them again. Link to the Past, the third chronicle of the Legend of Zelda, spoke of an earlier period in Link's life, but the story did not begin with him. The roots of the tale were buried in an earlier age, in a time when Ganon was yet mortal, and he was called Ganondorf. King of Thieves. While he possessed no magic at first, Ganondorf did command a vast army. By treachery and, and force of arms, he gained control of the Triforce and the Golden Land in which it resided. Renamed Ganon, he directed his now enchanted army to overthrow the rightful king of Hyrule. It was only by the magic of seven sages that Hyrule was saved from the wizard's wrath. The seven then sealed Ganon within the Golden Land, which in time became known as the Dark World. As the years tumbled past, the threat of Ganon was forgotten. Then there came a time of great disasters in Hyrule, fires, floods, pestilence and famine. A one wandering wizard named Agahnim used his power to end the trouble and thus was named Counselor to King. Agahnim played the role of trusted advisor for a time, but soon seized power for himself. He imprisoned the seven descendants of the seven sages, as well as the king's young daughter, Princess Zelda. As he was taken, Zelda used the powers of her mind to send out a call for help. Her desperate plea was answered by a boy, bold boy named Link. Mindful of the danger, Link gathered three mystic pendants. Hey, wait a second, they f forgot to mention Link's f uncle. It was quite important. Character um, attempt to free the Master Sword, the only weapon powerful enough to stand against Aganim's magic. Shining blade in hand, Link cut the swath through Aganim's magical defenses, only to discover that this nearing sorcerer was merely the puppet of the dreaded Ganon. The ancient wizard had finally found a way to breach the barrier between the light world and his dark world, and the only one who stood in his way was Link. Using such legendary weapon as the hookshot, the beggar's shoes and the magic mirror, Link journeyed, journeyed between the light world and the Dark World, freeing the seven captivity, captives, 
captives and gathering the magic crystals that would unlock Ganon's dark tower. In the end, Link defeated Ganon in an epic battle high atop the wizard's shadowy citadel. Many say that it was the power of the Master Sword that finally proved to be Ganon's downfall. Others shake their heads knowingly and speak only of the stout heart and pure spirit of a lone little boy. Master Sword, the conflict between Ganon's army and the forces of Hyrule was called the Imprisoning War, and it was during this time that the Master Sword was forged. No warrior of that age was deemed worth enough to wield the sword, and it lay idle until Link claimed it. But wait a second. How does um, Ocarina of Time fit in because, you know, Link gets Master Sword he in this game as well. And Ganondorf is uh, mortal in this game as well. So, I don't know. Magic Mirror. Link uses the Magic Mirror to travel freely between the Light World and the Dark World. By gazing into the depths of the mirror and picturing himself in the other world, Link could propel himself through a magical whirling vortex. Okay, here we go, Ogorans 5. Time. Much about the lives of Link and Zelda remains a mystery, but a new chapter in The Legend of Zelda was recently unearthed in a remote corner of the Hyrule Castle archives. It shed some light on Link's boyhood and on the origin of the thief who would become the dark sorcerer in Hyrule's history. Link always seemed destined to be a hero. Even as a boy, his fate was bound to be to the fate of the Triforce. It was as if time itself had chosen him to be a champion, and nowhere is this better shown than in this latest chronicle, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Newly discovered by Highland scholars, this tale stretches from Link's boyhood to his early manhood. Some scholars suggest that this is indeed an account of Link's very first adventure. Others believe that the Link and Zelda in this story may not be the same as those in previous chronicles, and that they are perhaps ancestors of that famous pair. While these questions may never be settled, we do know that the this Link and Zelda displayed the same courage and nobility as the others who have borne those honored names. Yeah, I don't think that, uh, you know, ancestors are all always the same kind of uh, people. And, you know, should, shouldn't Link and Zelda have like a brothers and sisters as well. I want to play as Link's brother, Lonk, who will rescue Zelda's sister, Julda. Like the Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, this story began long before Link and Zelda were born. In fact, it began at the very birth of the world, when three goddesses shaped this globe. This globe. And, and breathed life into it. When their labors were done, Din, goddess of power, Nari, goddess of wisdom, and Ferora, goddess of courage, created the Triforce as a token of their holy bond with the world. But the Triforce stood became sacred ground, and the goddesses promised that as long as the Triforce endured, so would Hyrule. In time, Hyrule flourished and became a powerful kingdom. Near Hyrule Castle, the great green world wood, home of Kokiri, known as the children of the forest, all Kokiri had their own guardian fairies, all that is, say one. The name of this lone Kokiri was Link. Or if you you can just create your own name, so it might not be Link. It might be Buttface. For a time, Link had been troubled by nightmares. Every night, as the blankets of sleep enveloped him, Link would find himself in the midst of a terrible storm. He would see before him an imposing castle 
and stirring spires lit by lightning. A rider on horseback would race by, a terrified girl locked in her grip. A fleeing glimpse, a desperate look, then she would be gone. Another rider would appear then, cloaked in black. He would turn his smothering gaze upon Link, then Link would awaken. And thus began one of the darkest chapter in Hyrule history. Ocarina of Time was said to have the power to transport its bearer over vast distances. The Ocarina was also reputed, reputed to have other fantastic powers. These powers would be tapped in particular songs were played or if the Ocarina were played at certain times. Cool. So why didn't the Zelda use it while uh, she was in danger? She didn't need Impa. She could have just uh, play ocarina and go to go to somewhere else. Spiritual stones, like the Triforce, Kokiri's emerald, Goron's ruby, and Zora's sapphire, were said to be tokens of some higher power. They lay hidden from mortal eyes from for many centuries, but Link bore them thro through great peril and used them to restore justice to Hyrule. Well, actually they didn't do much, they just opened the door for Master Sword. Then all hell come, come loose, came loose. Okay, Link in action. Yeah, I don't know if I wanna read this in such detail, you know. It's gonna take me a year to read this guide otherwise. Let me just glimpse through that things. Targeting, yes. R button. Moving right along. Sidestep. Jump. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I remember when I first played Ocarina of Time, I couldn't find a jump button. Uh, and was it that because I didn't have like manual? I was like, well, where is the jump button? But no, it jumps automatically. It's a little bit annoying because you see like uh, ledges, but then Link can jump up because there's no jump button. So I think the game, I don't know what, what was the rationale, but maybe it was just that it restrict the, uh, and makes easier to do the puzzles and level design because the player cannot jump anywhere freely. You know, so you are forced to use like those uh, some puzzle and and uh, certain like uh, pushing a boulder and in a place after which you can climb on it. Wimp. Open. Speak. Check. Dive. Push and pull. Trap. Throw and drop. Climb and drop. Action icon. I wonder if these screenshots are actually from the final game and not from the beta version. I guess they they had finished the game before. Otherwise, otherwise there would be some errors there.
If the action icon is blank, try moving around to see if the icon changes. Okay. Quick cuts. Just press B, repeat, repeat it, repeat it, repeatedly. You'll hack, slice, and slice your way through any minor enemy or obstacle with lightning speed. Stab. Jump attack. Chop. Wah! Wah! Yeah! Can I hear the youngling's voice when he attacks? Yeah! Combat training, swords play. Jump attack has twice the power of the other attacks. Yeah, I usually would use that because then you can kill the enemies. Sometimes in one one blow. Once you're older and taller, a sideway slice will pass right over them. Okay, they're gonna mention the magic spin. Spin. Field practice. To hold the shield and walk at the same time, hold jet and hold R while you're moving. Roll. Oh, there they are, spin attack. Once you have learned ma once you learn magic, the method of charging up your spin will actually use some of your magic power and the the attack will be even stronger. Yeah, I, I rarely used the spin attack because it just takes so long that just um, uh, make yourself make yourself vul vulnerable and often you just uh, get the hit while charging and yeah and usually even the charge sp or spin attack couldn't even kill the enemy so anyway you have to you have to uh, hit them again Z targeting Keep in mind that set targeting has a limited range, and that range is different from enemy to enemy. You may have to stand within the enemy's attack range for set targeting to work. Yeah, that was that was often the case. Case, for example, killing the keys or, or bats, they would just uh, fly away, and then you would lose the set targeting, and then you could hear them come back. <laughs> you would have to jet target them, but if you were like turned the wrong way, it wouldn't automatically target. So it was a little bit difficult, especially if you if you don't play on headphones. On then you can't hear the 3D sound. Uh, you can't like know what, are they coming from left or right. Attention will remain focused on your target until it, it's defeated or you look away manually. This may leave you vulnerable to an attack from another direction. I think, was it like Wind Waker, you could like change the target? But I think, uh, Yeah, I think uh, to switch among different enemies within your line of sight, press jet repeatedly. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult to al always pick the target. Back 
flip dots. Link's arsenal. According to the ancient scrolls, Link had many wondrous weapons at his disposal. Some required magic, and we've noted how much magic power was needed for each use. In addition, the things Link used only as a child are marked in yellow, and those that be, be used only as a young man are marked in green. Decustic was a common item used both as a weapon and as a tool. Link sometimes swung it like a sword, but it tended to break easily. He used it more often as a torch or to start a fire. It was commonly found in shops or left behind by enemies. <laughs> start a fire. It's like... <laughs> Link is like a... Like... Wanna start a forest fiery Kokiri forest? Burn, burn every everything, burn all. Ganondorf is like, what is he doing? He's he's mad kid. This Link is destroying the whole high rule. There's nothing left for me to rule anymore. Link is like. <laughs> I burnt down. So it was actually not uh, Ganon who burnt down Hyrule Castle Town. It was Link with his mad obsession with fire. <laughs> Fairy Slingshot. As a child, Link was famous. Famous for whom? He didn't have any friends. Or his skill with his fairy slingshot. Besides, he only gets it in in Deku inside Great Deku Tree, so he didn't have it in his cookery childhood days. Unless there was another fairy slingshot before. Anyway, long range weapon that he found early in his quest, using Deku seeds as ammunition. It was said that he could strike down. Stike. There was no there's no R there. Stike down Skulltalus and other fearsome enemies with ease. Boomerang. I wonder if these like these rendered images exist somewhere in like original files. You know, it would be interesting to have these like Remastered in, in a remastered version, 4K. Probably there's like a, some some HD textures that try to recreate this from this original art style. Decknut when thrown, the decknut exploded with a flash bright enough to stun some enemies. It did not work to all enemies, but it was plentiful in most areas. If Link's supply was running low, he chopped at bushes, defeated enemies and overturned stones to find more. Boomerang. The boomerang is an actually an ancient invention, and Hylians were famous for their skills in both making and using it. Link used his most often to stun or defeat enemies. In fact, he could defeat some types of creatures only with the boomerang. Ocarina. An ocarina is a flute-like musical instrument. Two of them figured prominently in Link's adventure. One was the fairy ocarina and the other was the ocarina of time. Both possessed amazing powers and Link learned to play many marvelous melodies. Let's of truth. The Lens of Truth was well named, for it allowed Link to peer through fake walls and see invis invisible items. Using this item consumed small amounts of Link's magic power, but it was well worth the cost. The amount of magic used was depending, dependent on how long the lens was used. Yet the thing is that you get the Lens of Truth in so late in the game that uh, there's not much use for it. 
apart from the apart from the fifth temple fourth temple shadow temple but I don't know if, if it actually I never tried to use it in like uh, Lake Hylia or Zora's Domain or Kokiri Forest would it actually would it actually show something I don't know Bomb Link used a crude type of bomb to open up weak spots or in walls or blow, blow up boulder blocking underground grottoes. Once the fuse was lit, Link had only a few seconds before the bomb went off. He was also very skillful, throwing a bomb like a ball, and usually it just would explode himself. It would explode in his hand, hands, damaging his hands and making him, him a cripple. <laughs> Bombsha! Bombsha! The Bombsha was a marvel of engineering. It was a mechanical mouse that Link could use to carry a bomb to a target. The bombshell could climb up walls and reach areas that Link could not, but Link had to aim it carefully, since it couldn't be steered. I think some of the golden sculptures are, are difficult to get because you need like bombshell and you have to be so precise with the angle. Magic Bean Link traveled far and wide, but he never met anyone who said fee fi fo fum He did find more than one magic beam, however. Whenever he found a good spot, spot he planted sorry, he planted a bean a bean. Each one later sprouted and grew strong. Fairy bow When Link grew to manhood, he gave up his link shot in favor of the more powerful fairy bow. It could fire three types of, of magic, magical arrows, including the fire arrow, the ice arrow, and the light arrow. This bow was one of the link's most trusted weapons. Hookshot. Another multipurpose item, the hookshot, was a hook attached to the end of long chain. Link used it as a weapon and as a grapple to grab objects or swing across gaps. As his adventure went on, Link was able to lengthen the chain considerably. The longer version of the hookshot was called, called the long shot. Yeah. I guess you, the hookshot is also like a magic weapon because, you know, it can't work like that in real life, you know. I mean, maybe they could be like springs that would, uh, like, uh, like, uh, uh, springs that would like uh, lock and retract, but you couldn't like. Uh, Couldn't like uh, swing across gaps. Without like uh, some electric electric e engine inside, I don't know. Not Megaton hammer. Not only was the Megaton hammer useful for pummeling stubborn enemies in the submission, it was also useful for moving blocks and turning rusty switches. Imagine what it would be like if everyone had a toolbox with one of these. Yeah, again, a, a weapon you get so late in the game that there's not just not much use for it. Except against Ganondorf. Fire Arrow. A clever mix of science and magic was used to create the Fire Arrow. Okay, what's the science part? Exploded on contact. A small quantity of magic was used to boost the arrow's explosive power, creating a large fireball that would expand quickly and catch enemies off guard. This arrow encased enemies within a numbling block of ice, immobilizing them. If Link did not have enough magic to power off magic arrow, he could not. It could still use 
it as a normal weapon, but it would not have any special effect on its target. Um, light Arrow. The Light Arrow required twice the magic of the Fire Arrow or the Ice Arrow, forcing Link to save it for times of great need. It caused more damage than the Fire Arrow and or the Ice Arrow, and enemies would cover Cover, cover, cover. Whenever Link drew one of his quiver, quiver. Okay. Play of words. Um, Din's fire. The three goddesses who created tri Triforce also left behind three magic spells, with Link, which Link discovered and mastered. The first was Din's fire, which Link used to, to surround himself with a ring of fire. This placing the fauna, uh, fauna kept enemies at bay. Hardly ever, ever used this, except when you wanna light up uh, torches. Pharaoh's wind. This spell was used to create what Link called a warp point. Once Link created a warp point, he could teleport back to that location at will. Collapse a warp points so that it could be moved to a new location. Link used the dispel, dispel warp points command. Yeah, this again when I played played the game in the 90s, I didn't really use because I didn't understand it. Obviously, n nowadays I would understand it's uh, it's. Uh, it's a uh, benefit, you know. Uh, you have to backtrack so much if you can. If you use the, if you use Pharaoh's wind, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh's wind. Now, now is now, now is love. Sounds like a seventies soul soul song. Very white. Now is love. Love is Naris. The last of the goddesses spell was called Naris Love. This spell protected Link from all harm for a short time. Like the other spells, Naris Love was kept secret and safe by the fairies. The only mortal they ever told about the spells was Link. Yeah, I never used this one either. Especially because it just takes so much magic. Cannot use like magic arrows any any anyway after using the Naroslav. Okay, Hylian lore. Not only do the ancient scrolls describe many of the key techniques and strategies strategies that Link used during his quest, they also contain a lot of practical information about everyday life in old Hyrule. Anyone who would follow in Link's glorious footsteps should read the scrolls and heed their sage advice. Swiftly fly the years. When Link unlocked the key to the Temple of Time, his spirit was imprisoned until his body aged in the death of a hero. For seven years, Link lay in limbo until he was awakened to challenge Ganondorf and complete his destiny. In that time, old friends and almost had almost forgotten him, and the kingdom of Hyrule had declined, plagued by monsters and evil magic. Link set out Im immediately to put things right, traveling back and forth through time in the process. He found that there were some things he could do only as a child, like crawl through small passages. passages. There were also things that he could do only as, a, as an adult, like ride a horse or handle his heavy hurling shield properly. No matter his age or size, though, Link proved himself a worthy hero. It's inter interesting that uh, during those seven years, Ganondorf did nothing to like destroy Kakariko village, and all the all the people are still alive. Kakariko, Kakariko village. So I don't know what was his ultimate goal. 
does he want to just um, rule the rule the high rule or rule the world? Or does he want to kill everyone? Eventually, I don't know. Obviously, he was just waiting for Link to reappear, but didn't like uh, murder murder every citizen of 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 the old Hyrule. As a youth, Link's small size came in handy in many situations. As an adult, he would skip up Deku sticks, his boomerang and fairy slingshot for such weapons as the hookshot, the fairy bow and the megaton hammer. When Link became an adult, his friend Malon and her horse Epona still remembered him fondly. He was then big enough to ride Epona, but to claim her, he had to win a very difficult race. Whenever a young Link found one of these squirt of patches of dirt, he would plant a magic beam. By the time he woke from his enchanted sleep, the beanstalk had sprouted and grown tall. The Fall of Night Link labored day and night to complete his quest, and, in fact, he faced different challenges at different times of the day. For example, Hyrule Field was a place of rolling hills and warm sunshine during the day, but once the sun went down, it was a place of dark dangers. Strange creatures that would not walk by day would stalk the field by night to ambush unwary travelers. This was true of many places in Hyrule, rest assured, though that not though that not everything that happened at night was bad. In Hyrule Castle Town, for example, some shops opened only at night, giving Link even more choices of goods and services. Different people would also come out at night, and many of them had information that was very useful to our hero. If he wanted to explore Hyrule Castle Town at night, he had to enter the gate before sunset, walk through the marketplace and stand on the road to the castle until the sun went down. He could go back to the marketplace then to look around. Yeah, I think it was an, like a nice gimmick, but then Majora's Mask, even though people say that it's like a better game than Ocarina of Time, just uh, found the uh, day cycle and time cycle a little bit annoying that you just have to like time your time your uh, action precisely otherwise you, you nothing's gonna be there you have to like um, use use the use the song song of uh, what was this, what was the song called anyway the song to return to the time or progress in time it was just a little bit annoying for me in Majora's Mask and, and I actually never like got got all the or was interested in collecting all the all the masks because it was just a, like a chore to f find people and talk to them and do them do everything they wanted in, in a certain time time hour or hour of a certain day. So so yeah. I don't I don't wanna wait. I don't I, if I wanna do something I wanna do it then and there and not like use any use any songs. All manner of dark and unholy creatures would come out at night. This was true in Hyrule Field and in many other loca locations throughout the land. The outer gate to Hyrule Castle would close promptly at sunset. If you didn't reach it in time, it's stuck outside during the long cold night. In many places, cold scuttlers would come out at night and crawl 
around the outside of buildings. Link would listen for the, te the telltale sound of the scrabbling legs. No stone unturned. Ancient Harrow was a wondrous place with secrets and surprises. Around every corner, Link left no grass uncut, no stone unturned during his quest. Rupees, the currency of old Hyrule. Hearts, which uh, replenished Link's energy, and more were often found in grassy fields or under rocks. As he explored, Link also searched carefully for secret grottoes hidden under bushes, beneath boulders, or behind cliff faces. In these secret grottoes, he found valuable items or fairy fountains, where he could replenish his energy. In the great fairy fountains, he even learned various magic spells. He sometimes had to return to a fountain two or more times to uncover all its secrets, but the reward he received were usually worth the effort. Link used his sword to cut grass in the fields. He also used bombs to blow up boulders to large to pick up and throw. In the old days, you could never tell what might be lying under the rock. Perifantas were safe havens for Link off on his long journey. So if he needed to replenish his energy, he could go to a fountain to rest and heal his wounds. So yeah. So if you see uh, like a ring of ring of gra grass, you shoot that in in the center. There's like a bumble ball crotto. Recycle your bottles. Glass bottles were commonly used even in olden times, and Link could fill them with milk, potions, and other useful things. Such a prized possessions could only be earned, not bought. He reused his bottles when he could, using them to store items he gathered in his travels. He even used them to capture fairies he found in some other of the fairy fountains. It was said that he carried fairies in battle, and if he, if he was injured badly, the fairy would restore his strength. It's interesting that they're giving these hints as if they were like uh, some mystic knowledge. In other words, they could say just remember to carry fairies because if you die in a boss fight then you they you get your half energy back. But this is just like a, a, a told in like a, 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 in in a in a chapter, you know. Not like straightforward hint, but it's like like a lore. Though Link did not have a guardian fairy for much of his childhood, he gained one just before he began his quest. The fairy's name was Navi, and besides helping Link with the sea targeting, she also provided him with valuable information tips. Yeah, an annoying yells. Watch out! Watch out! Look! Look! Hey! When Link used set targeting, the target cursor would sometimes glow in a different, different colors. If the color glowed yellow, it meant that Navi knew that the enemy, that the enemy's weakness. If it glowed green, Navi had a hint. Or a bit of information. Link would, Link would then talk to Navi to hear what she had to say. Sometimes Navi would just call out to Link. When she did that, she wanted to remind him about important tasks or give him clues. Yeah. And often she would. On the move in Hyrule, Link did a lot of his explore, exploring on foot, as you might expect. He did, however, find other ways of getting around Hyrule. He looked for shortcuts. Whenever he went, he learned to ride a horse, and he even discovered ways to warp from place to place in the blink of an eye. There were a number of shortcuts that Link discovered during his travels. One shortcut led it from Goron City back to the Lost Woods. Link played different songs to warp to different locations. He had to learn the song. 
from a specific person before he could use them. On Slink 1 Epona, the horse, he was able to call her to almost any part of Hyrule field. Walking across the high length of the field usually took Link at least a day and a night, but riding Epona shortened the travel time considerably. Okay. Prelude to a quest. Hyrule and the portal lands were created by the three goddesses, but over time traffic between the lands trickled to a halt. Distant places became the stuff of legends. During his quest, Link reopened the old routes, forging new ponds between Hyrule and the Kokiri, the Soras, the Gorons, and the desert people, the Gerudos. But Link's exploration also took him to the Temple of Time, where he opened the door to the Sacred Realm and the Pandora's Box of Evil. It's an interesting thing how, how small the overworld actually is in Ocarina of Time. It, it appeared to be big, you know, in 1998. This was like a huge, huge map, but actually if you walk from, from Soros Mountain to to Gerudo um, Valley, it probably takes like a, I don't know, 10 minutes by walking, so it's it's not that far. But you know, since I haven't played Breath of the Wilds, I don't know how long it takes there to walk from other, from one corner to other corner. Probably more than 10, 10 minutes. Yeah. And especially high rural field, it's it's rather small, you know. It's just a long, long ranch and then nothing nothing else. Just entrances to other places. Obviously it's it's just because, you know N sixty four cartridge couldn't hold that much information, data, in RAM, so it couldn't be like, uh, I think uh, it, when it loads an area, it loads it completely, and so that's like the limit of what what it can load in one, for one, like area. You know, if you take take account every every room that is location or load loading area, then there's probably quite a lot of stuff. You know, there's a the graveyard and and uh, lost lost woods and uh, no, Goron City. Obviously, all the temples and all the and uh, the dungeons, cavern, and inside Japu Japu, and they also have their own, own rooms that load. So when you think about it, there's actually so many locations in the game. If you consider all the all the rooms in in temples or or. Or like in inside Deku Tree, or Hyrule Castle Courtyard, and every every building in Kakariko Village has its own textures, and it, it loads. And inside tent in near the bridge here. And every every building in in Gerudo's fortress. So actually, there's quite a lot of stuff and, uh, and entrances. World Atlas. Or 
you know, melodies, while your ears may not be as musically in tune or as pointy as Lynx, you surely can play the songs as well as Hero of Him. So, for reference, write in the songs of the staffs below as you learn them. What? They are not telling them. What kind of guide is, it, guide is this? You have to write them down yourself. Scarecrow's song. If he only had a brain, Bonoru, the Scarecrow, would be able to recall the song Link taught him seven years ago. Remember the original tune to Serenade, Scarecrow Hookshot Target. Secret Crotos. In underground haven, Haven's lurk surprises such as fairies, cows, cows fish, or degu scraps, dealing goods and gear. To enter the secret grotto's bomb or hammer the boulder, concealing the entrance, or play the sun song or song of storms to magically open the ground. Okay, yeah, this is good map. This would have been helpful. I wonder who's the artist who the drew it is. When the three goddesses skimmed their fingertips across an ancient universe in chaos, the wondrous result was the realm of Hyrule from its majestic forest canopies to the crystal depths of its lake. The beauty of Hyrule served as evidence of the divine passion that inspired every breathing wisdom. So, what are you saying? There's no, there's a universe, and uh, everything that is is Hyrule. There's like nothing else on this planet. Is there like a, there like a pole, polar, or a great sea, or other continents? Or what about other planets? You know, in our universe, there are like a Tri trillions of billions planets besides Earth, but uh, I guess in in this universe there's just one planet and that <laughs> there's just one area that's high rule. Every nothing else matters. Triforce is located in this small land, and everything that happens happens here. So yeah, I don't know. Well, luckily there's multiverse. Ice current Chabu Chabu. Polar of Fire. Oh, it's interesting that they're telling which song you will get. Mm. Uh, wait a second, Taylor. You get Zelda's song here. I guess they're just uh, telling you about the uh, warping songs. Ocarina Warp, yes. Uh, oh, finding perfect harmony, harmony in Hyrule. With its one and a half octave range, Link's ocarina was often the key to solving mysteries, and when he wasn't fending off the forces of darkness, it provided, provided a tuneful way for him to spend his time on wind like a her hero by getting in tune with the ocarina. The measure of on the right chart and the ocarina of her range of notes with the corresponding button and control stick moves. To test your music skills, play the song below the village you hear while in Kakariko village. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, in order to play B, you have to hold A down plus Z and R to make the note you're playing a so sort of half step higher, plus the R button. With the exception of B and high F, pressing the R button will change a note to a sharp. Plus 
slowly pushing up the control stick, you can gradually raise the pitch of a note until it reaches the next higher note. The very note with vib vibrato at the tremolo effect by pushing left or right. I wonder if there's like a YouTube community who, who just makes pop songs with the ocarina. <laughs> like covers. Probably there is. If you want to make your note gradually dip to the next lower note, slowly press down on the control stick. To play your notes flat, the zone of the half step below, you're playing, hold the chat button while playing it out. It's quite tricky, yeah. I never actually realized that you could play the whole scale. I guess any note with R and Z as well. So what is this like? Uh, do 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 you starting with um, D G D B G D Interesting. What is this item chart? Time lineup time lineup at the top of the chart shows the outer order in which Link visited various places. An item listed directly below an area was found in that area. The left side of the chart shows places Link visited between his major quests. Use the timeline to see when Link found items in these areas. For example, Link found the Hefer Ocarina in the Cockery Forest after explored the Deku Tree. Each item is colored coded to show at what age Link used it? Green for adulthood, yellow for childhood, and brown for both. So you get um, Temple of Time, Cockery Forest. <laughs> yeah, you you don't get anything from Cockery Forest or Hyrule Field, really. So they can link. They can use links image here. You get Lake Hylia. Wanted to Wasteland. Temple of Time. Picoron Sword. But where you get the The, the sword that breaks. What, what, what was that called? F fool's, fool's sword or something like that. I think it's just a thing you can buy, so it's not important. Uh, Shadow Temple. Temple. Bird Temple. Okay, I think, yeah, and the next part is just them um, explore. Explaining the game. Game walkthrough. So I think I'm gonna stop here. Read them. Read it. Continue reading next time. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.